Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany, episode number 33. So what a battle this has been. I'm worn out. It's been a long battle. <laughs> so unfortunately we have to be a little bit careful with the ships reattaching. Um, we'll get these guys down to cruise speed, move them in. Make sure all these guys are angled to port directly. I think they are. These guys aren't, but we'll fix that. And you aren't, but we'll fix that. And a lot of the role play is going to have to abstract or pretend that we are doing a very good job. Um, like in real life, I don't want to actually manually control the destroyers, but I would send a lot of the healthy ones back so that they would go pick up survivors. <clears throat> and after this mess, I mean, both forces are disengaging. It's almost like a truce. Let's go pick up. We'll pick up the Russians too, we'll just, anyway, we'll just, um, so what we had done at the last episode when I loaded it, it was, there was a, an unidentified ship there, which is now not identified. Still, there's a hope, I mean, it could be a coastal patrol ship, but it, there's hope that that's the light carriers that the Russians are using. So for the remainder of this battle, what we'll be focusing on at the end of this, hopefully I'll remember with the battle reports, we can actually see who torpedoed the Gneiss now that second time. We can look at a lot of our torpedoes, uh, who who hit whom. <laughs> and we'll hopefully have some revision of torpedo launching practice and the further trainings, but right now let's advance and see if we can detect this ship. I do want to abstract that, yes, all those ships as... So I'm not crazy, I'm pretty sure that we had seen something up here. Suddenly it's not visible. They disappeared? Ah, got them. Okay, that's a little bit weird, but... Try to lead the target a little bit. So I want my destroyers actually to mostly stay at range. I actually don't want them necessarily to... I don't necessarily want them to engage these, like, carriers. They'll probably lose. These are, by the way, the weaker ones. These are only the Bockenheims. <clears throat> so we just want to basically stay at range. Keep their... the... Um, you know, shadows of those holes at the greatest of distance, which, you know, visibility is very poor in this weather. <clears throat> it's actually, it says weather limits air operation, although it's not even raining. I don't really understand. I guess low clouds can even limit operations. Nonetheless, just keep chugging along here. Goal is just, uh, well, I guess twofold. The destroyers have two jobs. One is to keep tabs on this fleet which I'm presuming is the light carriers. This the kind of line of breast formation screams to me, carriers. Uh, and then second thing is to maybe, if we have to, keep them from reaching port so that the battle cruiser can catch up. <clears throat> now, I wonder about this little deviation here. Ah, and then nice and now is going down. So I know that there's a huge crew compliment on the nice now, but Hopefully a lot of our destroyers can pick up the survivors there. Okay, so we have, oh boy. They have some kind of escort. <clears throat> I'm gonna guess that's a light cruiser, not a uh, heavy cruiser. And they have some destroyers. And we, I don't know, it's gotta be the carriers. We don't, oh, visibility just increased. That's why we're suddenly getting pelted. Squad max is 31, stay at 29 then. Okay, that is a, okay, yeah, we have confirmation now that there's flat tops. The flat tops are reported. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a nasty, Cruiser for us. 
The best thing for us was if we could get the battle cruiser. Oh my god, it's gonna be nighttime soon, which is gonna be a disaster for torpedoes. We're gonna go in though, we wanna engage their destroyers. We want to take them out, they're the biggest threat to us in a way. <clears throat> so we are we engaging? I want to actually choose the ship target, but it's gonna be nighttime soon, so we're gonna have to close because <laughs> we're gonna lose visibility in a moment. Got him. Got him. Lost him. Got him. I do want to overtake as well. Um, assuming that these are... Okay, yeah. Perfect. Hit him. Hit him! Good. That is the biggest danger to my... Oh my god! <laughs> I suppose the Sea Drac has just lost her uh, ability to control her rudder. We did launch... Damn it! Don't launch torpedoes. Hold torpedo fire for now. Let's also deploy smoke because... Want to save ourselves. I suppose that you've lost your. Yeah, rudder jump starboard. Okay, so you might as well go down to cruise speed. <clears throat> the rest of them at 30 knots. We actually did it. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, hard to praise such stupidity. So this one's obviously going down. I think that. Actually, she doesn't. Wow, this is a 1500 ton ship. That's pretty big business. And uh, landing a few guns on this is going to reduce its ability greatly to attack our Ostfin, which is very slow in catching up, unfortunately. All right, Worms is starting to take damage here. So this, we do actually, I didn't mention this, but we have a German port so far into the Russian territory that I imagine that a blockade of the Russians is very real. Obviously, the entire Baltic is almost, well, let's say, at least 60% of the Baltic and the entering 60%, the initial 60% of the Baltic, it's all in German hands. <clears throat> you can imagine it's just going to be um, just terrible if, if their Russian fleet was based in uh, Stalingrad. I mean, sorry, uh, Leningrad, I wanted to say, but St. Petersburg probably it's still at this point. Um, no, wait, these guys are the Red Army. So yeah, if there was a fleet at Leningrad, They would definitely have a hard time getting out of the Baltic. So we're gonna move, the, I think the closest one, especially because we can't go as the bird flies to this one, uh, the closest one is all the way over there. I mean, not, it's, it is the closest one. <laughs> so we'll just uh, make our way for this port. <clears throat> I think we're actually gonna have to press on despite the damage. Just need to push them. Well, we don't need to. I guess we could, in fact. Okay, let's disengage. We're gonna run out of ships pretty soon here. Forty-four percent. Let's take her down to cruise and just get her out of the way. Yeah. So they are targeting her. We'll go pick on this ship, which is, I am surprised it's not even officially sinking yet. A 1,500-ton ship taking a torpedo. Look, destroyers can recover from torpedoes in real life, but the chance of it happening in Rule of the Waves is... Well, we've seen every single... God damn, torpedo tubes hit. We've seen every single one of my destroyers sink on the very first turn that it reports being hit. So I'm be I'd be very surprised if that one survives. <clears throat> Man, though it's can we just launch torpedoes? Perhaps get them to change direction. I think we will do the long route here. I'm okay with the low range, the low speed torpedoes. 
Yeah. The one I actually want is this. I believe this is the heavy cruiser, or light cruiser, I should say. So let's launch a few over there, and then, oh god, let's get the Uber Gale out of here now. And then there was one. Okay, and you are going to deploy smoke as well. Very good. Actually, you might as well launch torpedoes as well because... <laughs> yeah, so this is obviously bugged. There's a friendly ship in the line of fire here, but not here. Something is very weird about this. Yeah, the calculations are just off, I would say. It definitely needs to be looked at. Um, we're going to pull back. Osfin is slowly closing. Move back in. Okay, how are you doing, by the way? Flooding up two. Send you off to this base. You're definitely relieved of duty. <laughs> Get out of here. You're doing okay, and the Verms. Yeah, these guys all actually need to go back to port. So we really do only have one more destroyer in the. Oh, oh, oh! So close. So we need your we need your eyes forward. It's now a two-man operation for the search, but one of those two men, luckily enough, is now the battle cruiser. This, this is impossible. I would say almost inconceivable. This damn ship is still actually moving. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous that we missed them, but I'm going to rely on our speed. I'm not gonna panic yet. They actually did seem like they were swinging north. Did we miss them? Oh god, if we missed them. I think we missed them. How? Okay. Calling these guys back. Obviously gone too far. So it's all just about telegraphing around. Where do you think they are? Where do you think they are? We don't have a very organized search pattern here. That's unfortunate.
Well, I really thought we had them. I sorry, I'm not even saying anything. I'm just trying to think about where would they have gone. I think they must have slipped past us and made it back to port. Somehow. Well, we'll get these guys into port then. I will pursue to the edge here, see if we get lucky. But yeah, kind of at this point, we don't expect to find them. Ah, balls. That's only okay if we end up sinking the destroyer, which I'm sure we will. The one that was torpedoed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oswin is responding to the radio messages. <laughs> Ship found south southwest of Hango Port. <laughs> Looks like a solo ship though. Oh my gosh. It's not a solo ship. Okay, good. Hit that destroyer. Okay, we got her. You can be, you're kind of like relieved of duty. Okay, they're firing here. They're firing here. Keep turning, I think. Nose on. Okay, these are just two destroyers. Damn it. Oh man. Well, unfortunate, very unfortunate. I thought we actually had them. Well, at least we're gonna end up taking another 1600 tonner down. But, you know, uh, actually the weird thing is with the daylight comes the possibility for those light cruisers or light carriers, wherever they are, to launch at us. So we're going to make like a, a tree and leave. I'm sure that these are both dead. And we're going to return to port. Boy, I really was hoping to get some better action out of this, but, I mean, uh, the fat lady has sung, let's go home. Although, although, maybe she hasn't. Screw down to 20 knots. We are expecting full daybreak soon. We have some people searching in the area. Time is almost up anyway. We're gonna buy a little bit of time for our ships to get to port. No reports through this line. Oh my gosh. What the hell's this? Oh my gosh, it's the returning battleships from the fight! Holy cow! Oh boy, oh, I don't know if this is good or bad. I, I don't know. Well, the Osvin has got herself into a terrible pickle here. I'm, look at it, it could be wrong. I'm predicting I'm not. You're deploying smoke, that's good. 
We're probably going to want a torpedo launch at max range. Disrupt. Yeah, I think this is going to be interesting. The Ospin actually has not fired much of her ammunition. She's only used her high explosive, actually. So she has all her armor piercing left. Let's steady out her course and let her rip. Rev up those engines. Let's go. <laughs> We're actually hitting the first one. Oh god, stop, 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 stop. Why did it do that? Why? Holy cow. So the Sverdlov, yikes, 10 16-inch guns. This is a Sverdlov which has already lost two of her turrets, though. An actual possibility to sink. What the hell have we done? And where the hell are their aircraft carriers? Must have returned to port. Um, you are not lacking guns. You are, wow. Eight 16-inch guns. Well, the Sverdlov herself leading this charge here at 10 16-inch guns. What's her speed? Heavy damage. It's a fool's errand. It's a suicide charge, but the Schnell Younga is going to be given permission. Begin your torpedo run. Oh my god, the Ospin is just getting hammered here. <laughs> We're going to stay the course, though. I'm hoping that she's going to be able to deliver some guns. Okay, uh, maybe a bad prediction. <clears throat> I think the Ospin just exits stage right. I don't think... <laughs> We're going to go in for the Sverdlov here. Obviously, it's the suicide charge. Wow, she can hit with her 6-inch guns from this range? It's pretty impressive. Look, we might as well pull our ship into full backwards. I mean, to full backwards. We might as well um, angle our just our stern to them because we have no forward-firing guns at this point. <clears throat> okay. All right. Hold on to this one torpedo for me. That's the angle I want. Okay, and retreat. Oh god, they are actually approaching. We got her! <laughs> it was the one I launched! <laughs> yes! Success, great success. Now get to port. Stay on target, get to port. Now, how does the Osman have 49 light aircraft, anti-aircraft guns? Pretty good. She is evading right now. Good her zigzag maneuver, I like it. We are gonna get the hell out of here. So they don't know we don't have any torpedoes left. Fantastic. Fantastic. Whew. What a day. What a fight. What a way to end this all. With a very hair-raising little encounter at the end there. Now, if that's Fairlof Sinks, I mean, what can you say? That's amazing. We did throw in another torpedo against her. Oswin all but, I would say, pretty much secured a, a berth in port now. She's going to make it back, I would say. No problems. be nice if my airships actually did anything. I'm more and more thinking we should just scrap those air bases, which, you know, the airships themselves are pretty expensive in terms of maintenance. So, 
That was a fun ride. What a fun ride. No ships left him out at sea for the for the Germans. We have retired. Wow! So the fat lady has sung, really this time. <laughs> uh, some stuff going on now. Don't know what's going on. It's definitely way over the time. And there we go. Okay, what is the result? Wow, okay, so um, I'm trying to take this all in here. The result is... So on the morning of August 8th, or August 5th, I should say, 1931, I don't know if it was morning or around noon, but let's we can say that the in the morning the German vessels sallied forth from the port, patrolling the Baltic. They left with eight battleships, and sorry, yeah, eight uh, and eight battle cruisers for a total of sixteen capital ships and one carrier. The Russians and also a patrol for dominance over the Baltic, left with 10 battleships and 7 battlecruisers. So 16 versus 17. They also had two light carriers. They brought a lot of destroyers. I'm not going to count. At the end of the day, the Gneisenau herself, unfortunately, would be sunk, although a lot of crew would be able to be picked up. Um... That's the only capital ship loss on the German side, but for the Russians, four battleships and all seven of their battle cruisers would be destroyed. That is, I mean, this is a remarkable, remarkable battle. This is remarkable. I'm a little bit, I think that Sverdlov survived. Did she sink or not? And we also, let's get to the bottom of this right away. Who hit me? <laughs> okay, so the last one was the Bazukprechny, which we'll have to go back in the footage and see what, which one that was. And the first one was the love key. Okay, let's go to the other ships. I think the it was the Von Eisen which was hit. Um, let's look at the Arena Von Hohenzollern. Her one torpedo hit was obviously a Russian ship. Let's yes, look at this guy surviving. No torpedoes hits. <laughs> It's interesting. I mean, I guess we can go through these. Which one is... Okay, so Kirov. Seven of these will be battle cruisers. Uh, I'm looking for a Sverdlov class. Sverdlov, Sverdlov. Mm -hmm. Sverdlov, Sverdlov. Yeah, I think that that Sverdlov survived. Wow, did she survive with, like, light damage? Are we not seeing all the ships here or something? Did I not? Okay, Russian. Oh, the one right below it. Hello. Right, so that was the only torpedo hit she took. That's acceptable. We don't expect to have destroyed her there. Hmm. Okay, so the Von Eisen took two torpedoes. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> the Shishwalba. <laughs> the Shishwalba is our first culprit. The other one was Russian. Um, who else took torpedo hits? The Vit von Macher. Torpedo. 
Okay, German. I mean, uh, sorry, Russian. One torpedo here. Oh, yeah. So that, I guess that Russian destroyer also sank with a torpedo hit. So the one torpedo, one torpedo. There it is. This is the one I guess we sunk at the very end. 1500, good. Just want to make sure it did sink. So now other torpedo hits. Okay, so let's see who, what other things we need to investigate. I guess only the, oh no, the Rhine took some hits here. Dud torpedo, torpedo, Russian. No, it should be so. So, does it count a to hit as a dud, or do we have another one for this? Looks like we should have had another one because there's a lot of flooding. That's from this, maybe. I don't see another torpedo hit. <clears throat> So I guess they counted this hit as a, even though it was a hit, quote unquote hit, it was a, oh no, here it is. Another hit from a Russian, got it. Hard to see, it's rather, you know, a tiny font. And the Navarin, which is Russian, okay, very good. So it's still a really incredible result. Um, we didn't end up sinking any of their carriers, but it was still interesting. So that's... That's the end of the battle. No, no, no. Let's let's actually see what happened with their carriers. Oh man, they How did that even How did Let me make sure this is all ships. Yeah, this is them for sure. This is at 2100, right? Which was I don't know. That must be, okay, so we found them, we pursued them. Ah, at four o'clock. I can't tell which is red and which is, oh, that's blue. This is what? 19, 20. Okay, so this is 20. Okay, good. This is them. They just, how did they, oh man, I guess we weren't close enough. They must have gone right through us because my destroyer was on my right hand side. So at 20, we definitely, ah, I don't even understand how we missed them. They would like literally slip through us. It'd be really awesome to superimpose this on um, the screen with our battleships to see how, how they actually did that. That's remarkable. So over here is 2100. So they were going slow. We just really ran past them somehow. Okay, well, that's interesting. Oh, 77,000 points. The Battle of Gotland. Well, that was one hell of a battle. Um, unfortunately... Actually, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Uh, not the, quite the result I wanted even. <clears throat> now we do have a lot of funds. I think we're gonna go ahead, these uh, airships have been nothing but useless. I guess we won't scrap them yet, we'll scrap them. And one of the things I wanna do, unfortunately, which means it's gonna require me to, I'll do it at the end of this video. We need actually to assign stuff. So let's uh, just assign things I'm just gonna put um, naval float. Uh, sorry, naval bombers in. So let's put them in Lubao and Riga, and Reval. <laughs> Reval class is no longer really an appropriate name, is it? So, okay. Riga. Huh. I guess it's considered the Baltic states. No, Reval has an airfield. Oh, I'll do it up here. Okay, so maybe they don't have them yet. Yeah, they don't. Okay, build and expand at all these places. We would like them. Closest one for us is Labau, I guess? Or is it Palau? 
it might be Palau, which would be, I think, one of our air stations. No, it is here. So let's just add units here. We're going to add 20 flying boats. I'm actually just going to be doing only flying boats for this first one. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm actually going to end up doing, but I just want to assist our ASW. And speaking of ASW, we're going to actually get some ships on Coastal Patrol now. Coastal Patrol. <laughs> Trade protection, it's called. Uh, I forgot. We'll get these guys on Coastal Patrol, or Trade Protection, I should say. And then when these guys arrive on station in Southeast Asia, they'll also move over. So the Bockenheims, they're useful to have, but I want them to move, at least a lot of them, to move over to Southeast Asia. So I have some escorts down there as well for the Hohenslorns. And right now we can set our invasion target. I want to set it for the Laotung Peninsula because there's no ships to contest us there. And I want to prevent an invasion of Djibouti. In fact, Djibouti is going to get air bases as well. And it is Djibouti Djibouti. Okay, that's fair enough. West Indian Ocean Djibouti. There, let's expand this base. So we'll probably very soon scrap the um, any airship bases that we have, all of these are going to be scrapped. Can we just do it in one blow? No, we can't. But I think we still will. In fact, yeah, frankly, the middle ones, like the keel one, can be scrapped. We're not going to use that one anymore. And there's eight airships. And eight airships are actually pretty expensive in terms of maintenance. That's, I guess it's 20 per. So, um,. That's uh, about 160 maintenance, just scrapping that one base, plus whatever the base itself costs. All right, so we're, we're trying to force an invasion over here. We're not gonna be able to invade the Marshall Islands, but I do want to take it in a, if we win the war. I certainly hope we do. Our invasion range is actually close enough to take Masawa, so we're probably gonna have to redeploy a couple. Let's just deploy exactly a couple. Oh, hence Lawrence over to that area just to prevent them from invading more than anything, but we're gonna have to square away the foreign tonnage situation as well. Our monthly funds is actually fantastic right now. We have another Sturmbringer finishing in, in well, three more months. And the, that's also when our Schlichtings will come out. The Rhineland's still over almost two years away. Uh, Mosul's, I've decided that we're going to build a new uh, light cruiser class at the end of this war. What we really want is 5-inch dual purpose. For that, huh, this is the torpedo warfare, which I find very funny, because it's such a crapshoot right now. I might even, after this war, I think what I'm going to do is actually take the Doctrine to only be gunnery, or maybe gunnery and night fighting. We'll go back to night fighting. I mean, if torpedoes aren't going to be helpful anyway, what's the point? Although, maybe the torpedo warfare impacts the chance for a torpedo which is intersecting with the ship's like ge uh, geometry, maybe it impacts the chance for that to have, be a hit versus a dud or whatever, in which case we do want torpedo warfare. But, because I mean, torpedoes, I mean, they do, they're just game changers. Now, what I wanted to talk about, though, is the turrets being on high, and they already are. Okay, well, that's good. Um, I think we'll put up machinery down to medium, or we'll put it up to medium now. Um, I don't know if I talked about this already, but the uh, invasion thing, we're oh yeah, I have not because I didn't put this to low yet. So I looked into this. Basically what happens with the naval invasion amphibious in uh, or with any technology is uh, let's just go to one which makes sense, which is like this. So let's say that I have researched these and my next one that I should research is triple turrets. The game actually rolls a dice. There's a 70% chance that this will be the next tech you attempt to research, 30% chance that you go to the next one and then do the same dice roll. So then 70% chance would take that. 30% chance we go to this. So at some point in our research, we had it such that we skipped triple turrets and got to the point where improved triple turrets was chosen as the quote unquote next research target. Then um, how it works is this is what you attempt to research. Until you research this, I is my understanding, you cannot research anything else. Now the problem with this situation, for something like this, it's, it leads to the funkiness which you can get improved triple turrets before you have triple turrets. 
Um, now, I think Frederick has corrected that in that once you get this, you automatically get triple turrets now. But for amphibious operations, for stuff which like um, turrets and gun mountings, when these um, are very close in terms of years apart, so there's like a year assigned to every research. And the closer you are to that year, the easier it is to research. If you're too early, like three or more years in advance, you don't, you cannot research it. Well, the different amphibious um, things, I don't know how many there are in total, but I looked and it's like 19, 10, 19, 15, 1920, 1928, 1931, 1934. So somehow I looked in the files and ours had skipped to tier four, which is a 1934 tech. So we can't even make progress on this. We cannot get any amphibious operations. So basically I think that the chance to skip shouldn't be a raw 70% if that's what indeed it is. Um, it should probably be based on the number of years the next tech is ahead. So you don't get this situation where, you know, you get stuck on a research like we are. Anyway, be that as it may, I don't think there's anything else we need to do for this turn. So let's end the... Okay, better damage control, which is perfect. Improve watertight hatches. I imagine that that may be... And somebody also mentioned that we should probably think about scrapping the Gneiss Nows. I mean, they're from 1913. They're pretty old. I know the whole Henselorns are pretty old too, but the maintenance on those is much cheaper than the maintenance on my Gneiss Nows, and they're still worth the same strategic points. Okay, very cool. Reduces torpedo weight mount. That's good. So we'll say no to all. Mm. One thing I wanted to do was actually go to unrestricted. Seems to be a very... So the Italians have sunk a, a neutral liner, which is going to increase our our looks. Ah, damage the Koenigs. Well, I don't like any of these submarine events. Even when we torpedo enemy ships, I always feel bad. We hit a mine. Yeah, so I don't like these. When they hit sink destroyers... Good. Uh, it's not that bad. So let's move to un. Oh, okay, let's, let's see. They don't even have forces there. Yeah. So let's go to unrestricted on our submarine warfare policy. We have good monthly balance still. Uh, actually, it's pretty much time to call this video to a close. But we'll. How about build bigger docks? And maybe that's it for this turn. We are blockading the Russians. That's good. The dominate, enemy dominates the seas is a bugged event right now. Uh, there's several reports where people have whole battle fleets and the enemy only has a light cruiser and it still gives that little pop-up. Thankfully, it's not worth very much in terms of victory points. And with our huge battle, we're not too worried about it. Okay, reduce the penalty for more than one ship firing at the same target. That's going to be very important with these huge fleet battles. Amphibious tractors. So <laughs> maybe we are getting close to that. Um, research then. Maybe it was 1931 or 1932 tech. Maybe not 1934. Or maybe I misread what number it's pointed towards. Alright, new fighter. It has four firepower. That's important. Third, okay, it seems to be better. It is better in every way. Yes. Okay, I don't like these events. So what we can see here is, although we're Oh, yeah, yeah. This is putting them ahead. Five merchants sunk here. 16. So they have 21. We have 16. Uh, we're still doing pretty well. And accept. Fleet battle. Okay. They're declining. Still blockading them. Don't really care about our intel effort against them. Might as well... What? The monthly balance is just fluctuating all over the place. Wonder what, what the heck happened here. I wonder what happened. That's weird. Where did that money go? Huh. Huh. I might have to look at that in the video to see what happened. Anyway, 44 minutes. We finally got out of that battle. I feel like this is a good place to... Oh, one more turn, one more turn. No, let's, let's save it here. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Wow. I'm slumping in my chair. Admiral Torturpitz is very tired. Oh, man. It's been a long... That was a long, long battle. I didn't fight that. I think that I actually did that in four different parts. Took breaks after every episode. Because I have limited time I can record every night. Anyways, it was uh, one hell of a battle. Obviously a huge victory. And rightfully so now we are blockading the, the Russians.
They still have a pretty sizable fleet. We'll have to be a little bit worried about that. Although six of their ships are 200,000, eight of ours are 300,000, which means that on average we're, you know, wow, they have two new ones at 76, so that's 38. It's pretty beefy. And they have three new ones at 120. Those are 40,000. Yeah, so they are building some big ships. Uh, as far as destroyers go, we have knocked the Russians down to nine total, which means they probably will deny all those battles. So that's the real reason why I don't want uh, the top heaviness. It is fun from a perspective that we can you know, punch each other with big ships. But the AI does decline battles when they don't have enough escorts. And that might even be what's happening with the Russians right now. So, so long as we don't have another invasion event which backfires and like they decline it and it doesn't result in an invasion, which supposedly, Frederick says, is what is supposed to happen. We might have an opportunity to see if that is working as designed now. But for now, I'm going to wrap this episode up. So hopefully we'll see our Sturmbringers in action in this war at some point. We will, if nothing else. I don't know how this double war works. It's been such a long time since I've been in one. I think that they just piece out together. So if we just continue to blockade the Russians, we should... Like in, it, like in reality, it would probably make sense that we would bring the Russians to a peace agreement and then have to fight the Italians still. Although the Italians would probably be at some kind of, you know, I mean, or who knows, they might be just ready to go. Yeah, I don't know how it works in the game, though, even. <laughs> I don't know how it'll work in real life exactly. I guess it depends on how things are going. It's really, you can imagine a whole bunch of different scenarios. And I don't know how it works in the game. We'll just have to find out how it works in the game as this war unwinds. But for now, thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.